please. Morning, sir. All right, good, good. Uh, just going to go straight into the session. Uh, so last, earlier this week, or last week, I believe it was last week, we would have started to look at some past paper questions on sports, uh, the contributions of sports to development. And so what I did was that I, uh, the penmanship is a little bit terrible, yes, but I, tr I hope you can read it. If you can't read it, ask a friend to translate. And so what I've done is that I've put some things together, uh, some points in how to answer the question, all right? So there are two questions here. Uh, from 2003 and 2013. So 2003 question, I believe we would have looked at that question uh, in the class last week. Uh, 2003 question, uh, sports have made a major contribution to development in the Caribbean. To what extent do you agree with this statement? Now, once you see the word to what extent, it means that you can agree with the statement or you can disagree with it or you can say both it. You can both agree, you can both disagree. You can present arguments for it and you can present arguments against it. It depends on how you want to answer the question. So once you see the question, sports have made a major contribution. For me, an easy way to answer this question is to agree with it. That's me, I would agree to it. Now, there are some very important terms that you need to define uh, while you're developing your essay. So I think you can't define everything, all of these terms in in the introduction. However, as you develop each of your points, some of these terms are going to come out. And so it is always good to define these terms. So you define terms like development, human development, infrastructural development, empowerment, investment opportunities, educational opportunities, physical education, reduction in crime, social mobility, regional recognition and identity, employment, health and fitness, also wellness or sports tourism. Now this question from 2003 was asked again in 2017 in a different way. And in 2017, the question was asked to examine the role of sports in regional development. So the question is asking the, basically the same thing. Uh, now, we would have gone through this already. So what are the different ways in which sports has contributed to development? No, we would have looked at this where we said that one way is that sports generates income, all right? And you have to look at small businesses. You can look at small businesses uh, that sports host, sports generate income to small businesses. You can look at the informal businesses, the peddlers on the street, the vendors, the soup, the person that sells soup, jerk chicken, candy. But always remember that if you are going to discuss that one way, one way in which sports contribute to development is the creation of small businesses, or you could say that, and uh, not only the creation of small businesses, but the survival of small businesses, you must link it back to development. So you can't just say that it contri one contribution is, is that sports generate income for small businesses. 
how that generation of income is linked to small to, to development. So you need to answer that question, how it is, how small businesses is linked to development. And if we know, and especially dealing with issues like, what are some of the issues that our society is facing? One issue, one major issue that Caribbean society face. Crime and violence. Crime and violence, yes, but I'm looking for something else. That is true, crime, crime and violence is one, but I'm looking for one serious economic problem. Unemployment. Unemployment, very good. So by the generation, so by sports creating small businesses, what that is doing, it is that it is providing an income for, the un for persons who are unemployed. So they have another avenue to get money instead of going to, uh, to a government sector to seek job, they create their own stuff. Especially when it comes to the peddlers and the vendors. And if you discuss all of that, what I just said, uh, that is one point you could discuss in terms of small businesses. Another point that I would have made uh, the other day was the publication companies and the printing companies. So these are companies that, if you're going to have a sporting event in the Caribbean, you're going to need sports manual, you're going to need flyers, you're going to need special books to calculate the points, uh, especially if it is a very big, 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 well, smaller, big event, people need to buy tickets. Somebody is going to have to print those tickets. Somebody is going to need to print the flyers. Somebody is going to need to print the manual or the rule book. Somebody is going to need to print the different jerseys for the different teams that is going to be there. So for the publication and the printing companies, they will also make a money. They will make money from, from generate income from sports. So this is going to, this is also going to provide employment for a lot of people in the society. Uh, the publication and the printing company, even if it is short term, because especially when you have 100 schools that need jerseys and each team, each school team have 100 students going to, to, uh, going to champs. Say, for instance, you have a, say 100 schools and 100, each team have maybe 50 to 100. That's a lot. So even if for short-term employment, you're going to need people to work to ensure that no error is made when the jerseys are being printed or the flags are being printed or the manuals are being printed or the tickets. So you are going to need that, which is very, very important. So it is going to sports, can generate income for the publication sector. The printing sector, which you can link both of them together. Also, sports is going to generate revenue for the government. And I'm just using champs as an example for the printing sector because if you have football leagues, whether it is the Premier League or an Caribbean character, a regional sporting event, you're going to have several countries coming together and they are bringing maybe a lot hit it almost a thousand it depends on the size of the country uh athletes to compete in an event that's a lot of printing jerseys and flags and tickets money uh you think about a cricket event same thing uh revenue Sports is going to provide revenue for government because for all the different sports clothing and the different sports wear that people have, uh, you, when, you, when you purchase those sporting 
where you have to pay a tax. There's GCT attached to it. And so the government makes money from that. And also when the athletes, the very top athletes, the professional athletes, when they compete in event and they make an income, they too have to pay tax. Sports, so, so we can see here that sports not only generate income for small businesses or the publication sector, but also for the government, they also get an income from it. Another way in which sports contribute to development or the role of sports in Caribbean development is through the manufacturing sector. You're going to need flags, so people, you're going to need fabric, so people going to cut out the, cut the cloth to make flags, you're going to need gym, gym tops, you're going to need trainers, you're going to need sports apparel with a different sporting fans on it or team on it, you're going to need swimming sports, leggings, football boots, suits, especially if you are going to an international event, and the opening of the event, you're going to need special suits to wear. And so the manufacturing sector are going to benefit from that because they have to produce all of those things to sell to the, to the public. And then sports also makes individual income. So individual people make money. So the athletes are going to make money from it. Uh, the nutritionists, medic people who are medical doctors can be uh, employed. The coach, you're going to need coaches, you're going to need chef, you're going to need all of these different persons. And therefore, if we look at sports as individual income, how it generates income for individual people, we could look at it from, we could define, use it, define the term employment, either in one of these are there. Or we could use it as social mobility. Because a lot of these athletes, they are going to make a lot of money. And so that is going to contribute to social mobility. They are going to be able to move up the social ladder as a result of sports. Now, media income is another way in which people uh, is going to generate income. Because as I said before, they, if, for example, the other day when they had champs, only one station alone uh, broadcast the event that was TVJ, they would have purchased the rights to, to host the event. And a lot of different advertisement on the TV and promotion and all of these different stuff. And therefore, media house is going to get their money, make money from it, is going to generate income. And sometimes these same media house, they usually reinvest their, the money, a portion of the money that they made from these large events into different sporting activities. And so, if you look at it, well, this is just point one, you know, one point, a yeah, generation of income, and you can divide this into several different sections. You can get one, two, three, four, five, six. You can get six paragraphs of a generation of income. Agree? Or you disagree? Come on, ladies, talk to me. I'm not doing the exam. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, if you look at it, you can get almost six, you can get four to six paragraphs by discussing just generation of income. If you go into the exam and notice what I'm here. If you go into the exam and they ask you what are the contributions of sports to development, right? 
You could say sports generate income. You could say that sports tourism is one example in which it contributes to development. You could say national identity, infrastructure development, health benefits, social programs, right? So you could discuss, discuss these five points. However, if you go into the exam and they ask you specifically on examine the role of sports in generating income, well, you have one, two, three, four, five, six points. But you could also go into the exam and they ask you just one question alone on examine the contribution of sports tourism. You need to define sports tourism. So we know that sports tourism is when uh, we invite athletes and different sporting bodies from overseas to visit our islands. Now, if you have these persons coming in, and especially in countries like Grenada and the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas, they, they use a lot of sports tourism uh, because there are people coming for surfing, kite boarding, sailing, scuba diving, snorkeling. In fact, in Cayman, a lot of everywhere you're going, Cayman, you see a red flag in the, in the, river, in the sea, I should say, showing you that this is a spot where you can uh, scuba dive. You drive on the road, you see the little red stuff, uh, red flag sign all over and say, this is a diving spot. Because a lot of people visit these islands for the sea. Snorkeling to go and look at the, what is down the bottom again? The reefs, the coral reefs. And sometimes countries gonna invite uh, put in bids to host world event or regional event. So there are times when Jamaica hosts the Carista Games, and this is a game of the Caribbean community. You invite people from all over the Caribbean to come. Once we have hosted the Cricket World Cup, where people from all over the world come here to play cricket. And also we have hosted the World Track and Field Championship. I believe it was 2000. And so sports tourism is very important because one thing, one point on the sports tourism is that once you have tourists coming in for sporting events, you can generate income in terms of the hotel industry. A lot of people going to come. Hotel rooms, Airbnb, people have to give up some of their apartments and rent their apartments or rent a room in your house. And so the hotel industry is going to make money from that. Also, the transportation sector, both the air and land transportation. So you could discuss this under one paragraph, discuss all the benefits of hotel, the sports, sports tourism to the hotel industry, sports tourism to the transportation sector. Talk about the taxes, the bus. You're going to need bus to carry people from the hotels, from the airports to the hotel, from the hotel to the different games. After the sporting event, people are going to need to want people, uh, athletes and coaches and all the different people that visit the island want to go and have a tour. So the transportation sector is going to benefit. And if people coming in to our country, then they are going to, we are going to get foreign exchange money, US dollars. Everybody getting US. Everybody. So sports stories in, you can also discuss it from, from the how the importance of foreign revenue. What are some of the importance of foreign revenue? When country gets foreign revenue, what, 
how is that very important for the country? What is the significance of that? Hello? Ladies, what's the significance of foreign revenue? Nobody know the significance of foreign revenue? I'm sorry, is it that when we get them, like we get the US dollars, we can use it back when we um, importing goods from the US so that it doesn't cost as much? Very good, you are correct. Yes, they use the same foreign revenue to purchase goods from overseas. You use the same foreign revenue to pay your debt because you can't pay your international debt in Jamaican dollar. You have to pay it in US dollars. And then when you have a lot of people coming into the country, you get revenue. What are some of the revenue you're going to get? One, they have to pay a hotel tax. They have to pay, what the other tax name? The travel tax. So you're coming into the country, you have to pay a tax. You're leaving the country, you have to pay a departure tax. So you have to pay arrival tax, departure tax, hotel tax. When you buy a uh, food at the hotel or anywhere, you have to pay tax on the food and the drinks. Beverage tax, I believe they call it, at the hotel. So the government is going to make money from it. All right? So, so if we look at it, ladies, generation of income, as I said, if they ask you broad way in which if a broad topic like this comes with actually the contributions of sports development, you could look at it and talk about generation of income. Obviously, they're talking about generation of income. I am not expecting if it is a broad topic to discuss one, two, three, four, five, six, all six of these points. You could discuss three out of it, or you could just, if you could discuss three out of it, but if they ask specifically on generation of income, then you need to discuss all of these points. If they ask you about sports tourism by itself, then you could discuss these four points. But if they ask you about the contribution of sports to development generally, you could talk about generation of income and sports tourism. And maybe you could mention one or two of these points on the sports tourism. All right. Then another contribution of sports is to national or national identity. And when we talk about a national identity, we are talking about our sense of belonging to a nation. And sports has shaped how we or we view ourselves as, as a nation or as a region. So you're talking about publicity from the performances of athletes. Uh, when you look at the performances of you seen Bolt, Shelley and Fraser, uh, all the different persons, the national image is shaped. Look at the effect on national identity. When, and our, if, when it comes to our national pride, we feel good that we be the very developed nations, small developing nations competing at the Olympics. We have done extremely well. So you could look at that. Also, another way you could look at the contribution of sports is infrastructure development. So you're going to talk about the they're going to build stadiums and gyms and sport complexes. Instead of you have a lot of idle lands in communities, what you're going to do is that you're going to create a football field or a community center to facilitate sports. So sports contribute to the development of communities. 
when we look at another contribution of sports is that we have to look at it that the government today pays a lot of money on for medication and for health care for people with chronic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension, all of those different stuff. So if the government promotes sports, whether through the Jamaica move at school or Jamaica move in this workplace, or the CARICOM move, because there's a CARICOM move, I believe, the aim is to reduce the spending for chronic diseases. So people be, uh, they are way healthier, you pay less money. So that money can be reinvested into other things. You have to make those links. Also, sports help with social programs. So you have a lot of at-risk youth, crime and violence in some community. And so sports, Help with if you have sports in sporting programs in community, the young people will find less time to go and involve in crime and violence, and sports will inculcate in them a certain level of morale and discipline about fair play and honesty and self control, and that will help to reduce crime in a society. And you also, if you're going to say that sports help with the reduction of crime, you need to also mention, uh, you could give specific examples, Jamaica in 1998 World Cup, Jamaica during Olympic period, we have seen lower crime rate during sporting time and communities that have very high sporting events uh, tend to have less crime and violence. And so this answer, these points answer question from the questions from 2003, 2017. Any question, any comments? All right. Another question that was asked. Is it the correct one? Oh, this never does it properly then. All right, so another question that was asked, where am I here? In 2006, it asked to what extent do sports in the Caribbean provide educational opportunities for Caribbean people as well as a route to Caribbean nationalism. So there are two terms here, well, three terms you want to investigate. You need to define sports, you need to define educational opportunities, and you need to define nationalism. Now, as I said to you, the question asks, to what extent? So to what extent do, do sports in the Caribbean provide educational opportunities? for the Caribbean, as well as a route to nationalism. So you can agree with the statement and you can disagree. But if you're agreeing, you can say, you can discuss under the point of sports and education, you could say that sports provide educational opportunities in terms of scholarships. Scholarship for what? Scholarship for both secondary school, and also higher education at the university. So you also get scholarships at the primary educational level? Yes, and also at the primary level. And you can discuss what the scholarship entails. People don't tuition, especially when it comes to higher education, right? It is so difficult for people to pay university fees, especially to go abroad to study, especially, right? And so sports will provide that opportunity for, for your tuition to be paid and your living expense. You're able to get a degree. Also, when it comes to educational opportunities, sports develop other career paths. 
So you have sports medicine, you have coach, sports nutritionist, physiotherapist. So sports is developing other career paths. So you could develop scholarship under one paragraph. Then you could also develop career uh, path or career development on another paragraph. And then sports also, in terms of educational opportunities, give you exposure and awareness to other countries. So when you travel to the Olympics or you travel to 10 relays or you travel to the intercollegiate games or you travel to, to different Caribbean countries to participate in sporting activity, you're being educated about other countries. You are being aware of other countries and their culture. And that, that in itself is educational opportunity. And sports is also going to develop a lot of sports colleges and sports programs in universities. So like GC Foster College, which is a sports college here. UTEC has a sports program. You will know. I believe last year or two years ago, we'd have started a faculty of sports. So these are four ways in which sports would have with four ways in which sports contribute to education, educational opportunities. And then if you want to say another part of the question asked about sports and nationalism, we talk about sports and nationalism in terms of our national image. Nationalism is this deep love for country. You love your country because your country is doing well on the international stage. Your country is uh, producing great athletes in the, at the Olympics. You have the fastest man in the world, the fastest woman in the world. The, what you, call, uh, you have one of, the, one of the greatest swimmer of all time, Alia Atkinson. the bobsledge team, you mentioned those individuals and how they create a sense of national pride. And when they create that sense of national pride, it will inspire other people in the society to become athletes. And the publicity that we are going to get in the world from the performances when it comes to sports, We'll also invite people to come to our own country to do research, to visit, to see what is happening, why people in the Caribbean are, they are performing so well when it comes to sports. Another question is, where am I? Good. from 2007 is that it state that West Indian cricket wants the pride and joy of Caribbean sport fans worldwide, as in recent years lack competitiveness in test matches. Assess the impact that this lack of competitiveness will have on regional cricket in general and on the region's development specifically. So one, the question is asking you about West Indies cricket. So you need to tell them what is West Indies cricket about. West Indies cricket is a team that is made up of uh, countries, members from uh, the English speaking Caribbean. All right? Now, what about cricket that is important here? Cricket was a British sport that was exported to the Caribbean by the British. That is how cricket came here into the Caribbean. Cricket clubs were formed across the Caribbean once the British came. But when the British brought cricket here, it's only the whites alone uh, originally could play cricket. Blacks were not allowed to play cricket. All right? And in fact, cricket was considered civilizing or socially refining agent for young boys. So cricket was supposed to be a vehicle to teach 
young boys, in fact, females were not permitted also to play cricket. Uh, cricket was supposed to train the young boys or men in the society to be future leaders because they said cricket uh, give them a sense of uh, discipline. You have to be very disciplined to play cricket and honest and fair play. And also cricket represent the epitome of integration. That's what CLR James said. So because, because from ever since the Caribbean has played cricket as one team until today, realize that when we go to the World Cricket, uh, what they call it again, the World Cricket Championship or tournament. Once we go to the, these cricket events, we don't go as Jamaica team or Barbados or Trinidad, we go as the West Indies. That's different when it comes to athletics, we go as Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, and all of these countries. But for cricket, we it is made up of members from all across the English-speaking Caribbean. But the question asks us that cricket, West Indian cricket once was the pride and joy. Yes, it was the pride and joy of the Caribbean. Why it was the pride and joy of the Caribbean? Because West Indies cricket used to win a lot of matches. A lot of test matches, they used to beat England. What is the significance of West, West Indies cricket team beating England back in the days? Why it was the pride? Why it would be the pride, ladies? For West Indies cricket to beat England. Hello. Why West Indies cricket would be the pride? That is correct, Rose, because they are beating their colonizers. They're beating the mother country, so it is a pride. And then also when Blacks start to be a part of the team, and Blacks are now winning a lot of these matches against Australian, uh, India, and all of these different territories, it is good to show that we can do things also. And so we need to ask ourselves what the question mean about lack of competitiveness, meaning they are not winning again. So West Indies cricket was once the pride and joy of the Caribbean, right? But in recent years, they have lacked competitiveness. In recent years, they have not been performing. You're, you're not winning as much match. So what is the impact that will have on cricket in the Caribbean and the development on a whole. So you could mention that cricket has declined. How we know that cricket has declined in the Caribbean? One, if they are not winning any matches in the Caribbean, they are not going to get any sponsors. People support things that are winning. You're not winning, people not supporting you. And so that means for cricket that you're not going to receive any sponsors. And so Hillary Beckles argues and said, cricket in the West Indies is so dependent on sponsorship of the foreign corporation. So if they are not, if they are not winning, less companies will be will incline to sponsor them and so they are going to need sponsors and so that is going to affect cricket negatively the lack of sponsorship another uh, reason if you're not getting sponsors 
who is going to pay the players? Because the West Indies Cricket Board has a funding problem. So if they are not getting any money into sponsorship, another problem that they're going to have is players not going to receive any money. And if people not receive any money from cricket, in fact, Usain Bolt said in an interview that he wanted to be a cricketer. But what was more attractive? The salary from track and field was more attractive than playing on a cricket team. And so for other sports like football and track and field, and we don't look at tennis, and we don't look at volleyball and those other sports in the Caribbean that has not uh, netball. Netball is a serious problem in the Caribbean because it's one, it's a female sport, and they have not been receiving a lot of sponsorship in the society. And so if you look at the female netball players, most of them are really living from hand to mouth. They are not as wealthy as the other sport persons. That's a gender bias there. And so people are going to gravitate towards other sports if cricket is not winning and they are not getting the sponsorship. And because of the popularization of other sports such as track and field and football, there's a larger pool for funding. So a lot of people, especially for football and track and field, a lot of people gravitate towards those sports. Because they can get contract to play on track and field team uh, abroad, football contract with different, uh, play for different private leagues in England and the United States. And the government of the Caribbean is not that wealthy. They have weak economy, so they can't pay the players, so you really need sponsorship. And we have to look at the impact of American sporting culture. And then when it comes to independence in the Caribbean, a lot of countries tend to support sporting events that is that their individual countries are participating in than a regional body participating in. So you have to look at the negative effects of independence on sports and West Indies cricket. Now, another question. Is this? One second. Identity of the development of Caribbean identity. So sports has helped to develop Caribbean identity in several different ways. So one, if we look at the athletic powers of, in terms of track and field, and you look at countries like Jamaica and Bahamas and Trinidad and Barbados and all Grenada, based on how the athletes perform, it not only creates a national identity, but a Caribbean identity. In Barbados, when Jamaica win a football match, not a football match, a, a race, it's not only people in Jamaica celebrating, people in Cuba celebrating and jumping up when Jamaica wins. People in Trinidad, people in Barbados, people in the Cayman Islands. In fact, one time I was in the Cayman Islands, I had no idea that a sporting event was taking place on the TV. It was during the Olympics. And uh, I believe one of our athletes would have uh, won a race. I and mean, there was jubilation in the supermarket in Georgetown Grand Cayman. Great jubilation. It was not a Jamaica win. It was a Caribbean win. The same thing when other Caribbean countries participated. When Grenada, Kirani James won uh, his gold medal at the Olympics, 
the entire Jamaica celebrated that win because we felt that that win also belonged to us because we are Caribbean people. So that creates Caribbean identity. And because we're doing so well abroad, universities abroad going to come to the Caribbean to recruit our nationals. Sporting clubs abroad going to come. So it's not only university, but sporting, sporting clubs. And winning in the Caribbean is like, a, it, it creates a sense of decolonization, our black power. Because we are defeating very large nations, developed nations, nations that see us as nobody and insignificant and poor. We're underdeveloped or developing. And we don't have the same uh, sporting facilities like them, but we are doing way better than them on the international scale. Next. In 2009, they asked the question, discuss four challenges that are faced by Caribbean country in using sports as a means of facilitating development. Right? So we have in the Caribbean, a challenge that Caribbean government uh, actually face in government space in developing sports is because one, there's a heavy emphasis in schools on academics uh, at the expense of sports. So some people believe that sports, people should not participate in sports. I have heard parents come to me and say that, listen, I'm gonna take her from the track and field team. I do not believe that she's doing well or some people believe that it's only don't people alone participate in sport. That's how, that's how some people view, that's how we view sports in the Caribbean. You can't uh, do sports where, uh, you can't be good at sports and be good at academics. You need to choose one. And most time it is academic. But you can pursue both sports and academics is a perfect combination. You do well academically, you can also uh, do well as a sports. If you are doing well academically, you're doing well at sports, come on, you don't pay any money to go to university. And another view in the Caribbean is that people see sports as just leisure time. They don't see it as anything else that has to do with brain power organization. And then another problem that government faces in developing sports in the Caribbean is that they lack funding. They are not, instead of saying that you're going to build a football stadium, you need to, you have to take that money to go and sort out the hospital or build some, some things in the school or pay teachers or do something like that or pay nurses, fix the road. So there's a lot of competing demand in the budget. And so the government is not going to really want to fund uh, the development of sports in facility or help with the maintenance of them. And that's a challenge. Another challenge is that some private sectors, they refuse to give money towards sports for its development. And that's a problem. Not again, but before, a lot of universities did not offer anything when it comes to training, sporting uh, teams and management or specialists. And that also led to the underdevelopment of sports in the Caribbean. So ladies, we are through with sports. I'm wishing you luck. In fact, we finished all the topics that the syllabus requires.
well, not the syllabus required, but what they said that we are going to get, you're going to get on the exam. So when we meet again next week, uh, we're going to meet on, they said that we are out Monday and Tuesday. So when we meet on Wednesday, we're going to look at the role of media. And when we meet on Thursday, we're going to look at social justice. And you would have already looked at the role of media and social justice in the common hour, but it's just to reinforce some points, especially for the paper one. Any problem, any comments when it comes to this document, ladies? Other than the penmanship, what other issue? You think it is okay? You can work with it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, good, good. And add your points to it. It is not... It is not said these are the only points, but you can add your points to it. Also, and develop the points to the best of your ability. So ladies, see you again. Tomorrow is what? Thursday. Uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in my mind, you couldn't correct me because in my mind, I'm thinking that tomorrow is, well, today is Thursday anyway. So tomorrow when we meet, <laughs> tomorrow when we meet, face to face ladies, we are going to look at the contribution of, we call it, we're going to look at the, the role of media. And we will meet next week, Wednesday, we do the next topic, which is uh, social justice. All right, ladies, see you tomorrow face to face. Blessings.